Uh, prepare for a cutscene heavy segment, at least in this first part. And I'm not gonna speed through all these, cause... For, just for people who do care about the plot and the flickering sprites. Uh, not gonna actually read what's going on, cause I don't really need to, but... Basically, we kick Booster out, and so... Raz and Rainy can get married, and... Peach is currently in the party, and we have to go return her, and a whole bunch of stuff is going to happen because of this. Anyway, you don't really have to watch the ceremony. Wait, nobody's even... Oh, okay, I guess we're marrying them. And Funky Song. I'm sure you can hear it so well with the terrible audio problems. And it was like four notes long. Good job, Tadovsky. So yeah, the kid finally goes to pay. Uh, we don't really have any further business here. Other than a pointless bit of trivia, this kid wishes it was ski season. This is important later on. Well, not really, but... Mario apparently is not happy looking, so he has to go, ah! for the wedding picture. I guess the ceremony is already over. If I went in there, it would pro probably still be going on. I don't really know. Kind of weird how that works, but... Anyway, like I said, we're leaving. And Mario has to trek all the way back. Jumping over... Ridiculous distances. Kind of awesome that he can do that, but... Makes you wish that he could do that with an actual gameplay. Yep, free frog coin if you return the wallet and... Chocolate. Ugh. Yeah, I get it. I'm standing in poo. We all know. Uh, Luigi back here doesn't really ever do anything useful. And yes, it is still totally Luigi. So everyone's shocked that the princess is back because this is a amazing development that Mario has managed to rescue her. That's never happened before. So I think if you go show her off to multiple people before you talk to the Chancellor, then stuff happens. I can't remember for sure, though, so let's just find out. Nah. In other news, I'm playing through yet another Pokemon game. Going through Crystal now. People totally care. Oh yeah, she yells at you if you look at her secret stash. It's so weird that that's even there. Yeah, I don't really have anything to say about Crystal other than I want to use a Noctowl, but I'm having trouble finding a reason to keep it on the team. Because I'm also wanting to use a Drowsy and possibly a Scyther, and I don't know. It doesn't have much of a use. So anyway, now we've got somewhat of a cutscene here explaining things we already know, but they do it in Mario's own special little charades slash transformation method. I don't really know what to call it. Oh yeah, his Courage the Cowardly Dog method. So I will use this time to talk about another thing that I've been doing. Uh, I started this quite a while ago, actually. I was playing through Pikmin 2 again and decided to do a challenge run not like a low number of days or no deaths or anything, because those are all... Well, the low day one is difficult, but I've done that already. And no deaths is easy if you reset a lot. Uh, I'm doing a Pikmin 1 challenge, which means, basically, you don't get to use anything new that Pikmin 2 offers. Uh, so you're stuck with uh, reds, yellows, and blues. You can use one white in order to dig stuff up. Uh, you can't use purples, except for for things that specifically require purples. You can't, you can't use Louie at all. You can't use sprays. I'm kind of documenting... Yay. I love that face so much. But, yeah, I'm, I'm like, documenting how that's going on GameFAQs on the Pikmin 2 board, if anybody cares. It's kind of bloggy, and I probably shouldn't even be posting about it anymore, because I don't think anybody really cares at all, but it is an interesting challenge if you've played the game a lot of times before. Because purples are, like, such a crutch to fall on. It's weird not using them. 
So like I said, this cutscene telling us things we already know. I guess just re-establishing the characters. But see, this is the kind of thing where, like, in a TV show, it's like, we've seen what happens, and then you have to tell it to somebody else, and then it fades to black, and it comes back, and it's like, and that's what happened. And then Family Guy would make fun of it. It's like, but you didn't do anything. All you said was, and that's what happened. But... Oh god, Bowser's dilemma here is amazing. Mario can't find the stars. Toad still will be mine, but I won't get my keep back unless Mario finds the stars. So if I want my keep back, we need those stars, but... Uh, makes a dumb face. He needs to just continue to make that face for the rest of the day. Oh god, he pretty much is. <laughs> I didn't remember he held it for that long. You're a princess. Who's ever heard of a princess going on an RPG adventure? Stupid fish. Okay, shut up. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about. Oh yeah, we got GameCube link cables, freaking finally. We kept going to that gaming store near us, and it never has them. So we finally just gave up and got them off of Amazon. So we're able to play through uh, Crystal Chronicles with it. It's kind of interesting with two people. Also kind of annoying, because you don't have a Moogle to carry the chalice. Uh, we haven't played through uh, Four Swords yet, but we do have that. That one will be interesting. And see, that's one that I would like to record. And I'd like to record Crystal Chronicles, too, but we just can't, and it sucks. So yeah, Toadstool is uh, very indecisive. Keep switching between saying that and Peach. Why did you throw the parasol away? Seriously. Like, you have to buy one later. I hate that she throws it away. God, the game lags a lot in weird places. I don't know, it's just a weird ROM. Ah! Okay, so yeah, this is the part where if you're not paying attention, you're not gonna know what to do. It says you have to go ask Grandpa, and you literally have to, even if you know what to do, like if... Okay, yeah. Pointy Monsters on Star Hill. I think that's the last thing that they ever say there. Should probably check on the other disembodied voice in Rose Town. Oh, God. So, now we get to talk to Frog Fuchsius for two seconds. And then we finally get to move on. That's it. That's all he says. But if you don't see that text, you can't get to Star Hill. And if you never give him the cricket pie, I don't think he says that, so you have to remember that you never gave him the cricket pie, and it's really annoying. And I don't think I ever had a problem with it, but a lot of other people did. <sighs> okay, so now we get to go to Star Hill, finally. This place is weird, and speaking of Pikmin 2... That noise that the doors make, I'm pretty sure is the exact same noise as when the flower, like, the berry plants grow. I don't know. So, yeah, there is a star piece here, and you'd think that means there's a boss, but there's not. So we're just gonna rush through this place, uh, see what all the wishes are. That one was Frog Fuchsius. This one's probably Raz or Rainy, we don't really know. I wonder what, who that made this wish. I do like how he actually reacts to it, though. Ugh, stupid thieves. And sadly, they did not run away immediately. There's some weird enemies here, though, if you, uh, bother to explore a bit and fight stuff. I don't know if I'll see any, but there's these ones called Masta Dooms, which I remember back in the day I thought would actually have been perfect as a Pokemon, and I basically did design one after it. It's like the Water Starter. I talked about it in a stream one time. I'm not going to talk about it again because it is dumb. 
surprised I got a max mushroom out of that. Walking is very weird here. Places that look like you should be able to go, you just can't. So you have to be kind of patient, I guess. I don't know what to say about it, really. Let's just see what other wishes we can come across. Tadovsky, obviously. I remember some of them being kind of generic and not tied to any character, but maybe not. There's a, a chef. Is it torte or tort? I, I know it's like an actual kind of food, but I don't know how to pronounce it. It's like how I always thought that internet cash was pronounced cache or cache, but apparently it's not. Yay, this is the sad one. Well, it's not really sad, it's kind of... Well, I don't know. He plays the sad music, though. And it verifies that his parents do exist. In the game, somewhere. I like how Mallow is the only one that, uh... has any reaction to the wishes. Oh yeah, this one I is probably that toad from Moleville, which I should go check back on, because he might have another thing now. He gets three different treasures. One of them is useful, if you use Toadstool on your team. Other two are kind of funky. Where the hell is that other flower? Am I just being stupid? Yes, I am. Oh, there's Bellum. I haven't seen the last of Bellum, unfortunately. He's such a stupid character. I just don't really get his design at all. No. No fighting things. Oh yeah, I should show this. I forgot about this, actually. Oh, there's this pointy monsters on Star Hill. Uh, if you have any Yoshi's Cookies, which I... Th yeah, I still have one. If you use it on, the, on one of these, uh, Muku Mukus... It's a Japanese name if ever I've heard one. You get a unique item called the Muku. <laughs> or I think it's a Muku cookie. And uh, I probably should show that one off right away, but I think I'll save it for some other battle. I don't know what in particular, but I'll find it I'll find a use for it. We just gotta remember that I have that now. The Muku cookie. And Yoshi's can't... Ugh, stupid migraine. Yeah, migraine's an instant kill attack. It's very annoying, but, uh, you... Sure, why not? You do, uh, regain one HP in your next fight if you died in the previous fight, and yeah, I guess right. There's, uh... Oh, hey, Luigi does actually exist in this game. Other than in the one... Oh yeah, there's the star. Just kind of hanging out. Now this is where the f like the flow of this game gets a bit odd. In the Paper Mario games, you have very defined chapters where you get the star at the end of it after fighting a boss. In this one, it's like the second star is after a boss, after a whole section. Then the third one you get immediately after that. Then you go through the whole booster subplot with no star at all, and then you get this one just kind of hanging out. It's... And there's a huge chunk later on with no stars at all, but that's for another day. I'm not really complaining about it, but it is sort of a strange decision. I guess it makes sense if you were really going on a quest like this. You wouldn't find them at set intervals, but by video game logic you would have to. There's, uh, one of the Yoshis. Who's this? Maybe Punchin' Nello? I don't know. Anyway. Head out of this place. We've gotten a star for doing absolutely nothing. Uh, next time we'll be doing Seaside Town. First, let me check on that toad. See if he's got anything in yet. Okay, so Lucky Jewel, still don't want to buy that. Oh, okay. I'm not sure when he gets the next thing in. So yeah, like I said, next time Seaside Town, I don't want to start it yet. So, uh... Don't... yeah. 